Hi, everybody, and welcome to this first part of talking about asset registers in the control systems world. So we're going to talk about the importance of asset registers and, and why we need them, not only from a engineering and maintenance perspective, but also from a, a cybersecurity perspective. So when we talk about an asset register, really all we're saying, it's a fancy way of saying inventory. So uh, I, I don't, <laughs> don't know why they, they try to use the, the term asset registers when it's so much easier to just say uh, inventory. And I think it's probably more widely acceptable and known to folks. They know what you're talking about, right? We're just talking about an inventory of having a list right, of all the, the different hardware pieces that we have in the environment. So whether it's a more of a traditional type of server or maybe a workstation or a laptop or a tablet that we might use for maintenance out in the field, or what if it's a, a PLC or an HMI, right? different types of more of those you know, actual control system assets that we have in the environment. Uh, so we'll have those hardware uh, pieces of hardware, but then we also have the software that runs on top of them. So things like operating systems. And I also include firmware as well in, in that software bucket. So when we talk about the operating system or firmware that's running on that system, right, that, that allows it to run. And then on top of that, we're installing different applications. So we want to make sure that we're also recording each of those applications. So we understand not only do we have a system, but what type of software and applications are those systems running and and that helps us not only to again keep that list so we understand what's in the environment to be able to maintain it from an operations perspective but also we can look at how we can use that information from a cybersecurity perspective and that's where we get into this idea that a very common saying is we can't protect what we don't know that we have right so we have to understand what's in the environment to be able to then of course be able to protect it i also like to look at it from the opposite angle and the fact that maybe my asset register or my inventory today is 100 percent complete and at the same time i'm not going to you know maybe have a complete or accurate inventory tomorrow. And I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but that's where I really, where my mind goes to when we talk about having an asset register or inventory, right? This whole idea that we need to know what we have in the environment to be able to protect it. And at the same time, I want to know if something changes tomorrow, right? What happens when somebody puts something on the network that maybe they should have, and it just didn't go through the appropriate change control processes, or maybe somebody put something on the network that shouldn't be there, right? I want to be able to identify those things as well. And that's where really we need to make sure that the asset registers are as complete as possible. But with the understanding that just because it's 100% complete today, it's not necessarily 100% complete tomorrow. So when we're looking at in this foundation for especially things like network security monitoring. And again, for me, I'm a, a big fan of, of vulnerability management, even in the control system space, right? Even though it works differently than IT, it's still very important, right? And that I wanna be able to understand, again, what happens if you can say a maintenance technician, right? Somebody adds a new device into the environment, right? That new device comes with its own risk. We need to understand when something is connected to the network. Even if it needs to be there, right? We need to understand though that it's there so we can help protect it and how it interacts with the rest of the environment and how it might impact the operations, the physical safety associated with the, the site, and then of course, cybersecurity as well. In that case, if maybe that technician had connected a new system or an asset to the network without the appropriate authorization, not going through the appropriate change control processes. And we definitely have an issue there that we need to address. We can look at what if a PLC programmer right, brings in a new engineering workstation, maybe they have a, a new laptop and that it wasn't 
process through the appropriate change control processes. Right? Again, it's another issue. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a true cybersecurity issue. It's not a, a, an attacker on the network. It's somebody trying to get their job done. But at the same time, it's we want to make sure that those assets are added correctly to the environment so that we do know about them and we can make sure that they're secure. Right? I want to make sure that engineering workstation has all the appropriate security controls. Right? We want to make sure it's hardened before the PLC programmer can use it to sit there and, and upload you know, a project file to, to a PLC. When we look at, you know, what if we just have also maybe folks within the environment that are, I guess, lack of a better term, screwing around, <laughs> right? And I, I, I've probably played games, you know, back in the day, you know, at, at work before you know so i can't necessarily blame anyone especially in an it environment uh, it's it's a stretch though you know in control system environments when we look at the importance of availability safety right most importantly you know the physical safety and, and what could happen when devices get attached to the environment uh, so i actually had a client a very very large uh, global client that had somebody bring in and thought it was a smart idea to to bring in an, an xbox and and plug it into a network jack in the control room not a good idea for many reasons nothing happened uh, the security team had had discovered it fairly quick order which was great um so and, and it could address the issue with with the employee the employee still still you know still works there today as far as i know um yeah, but we need to be able to you know, understand what's in the environment so as things change over time we can spot them spot those new assets and in this case make sure that we get that xbox and, and get it off the network before it causes some type of availability or, or safety issue. And then another example is just, what if an attacker gains physical access to a site, right? Physical security for me, especially at different uh, sites, right? Is the one that's lacking the most because probably most environments, at least from my experience, they don't see physical security as as necessarily as important as as other aspects of running the plant which which I, I can understand from some perspectives but it's almost to where you you go to a site or a facility especially if it's kind of considered out in the middle of nowhere and they, they think they're safe because an attacker is not going to drive three hours to their location to then slip under maybe the chain link fence fence that they have at the perimeter Right, or they think just a, a little guard shack at the, the front gate is is going to be all that they need to protect a, a a a large facility, right? So so I think physical security has has a long way to go in control system environments, uh, but but if I'm an attacker and if I'm able to slip into the environment in some way, shape, or form. And if I'm able to connect a device, a laptop, or uh, maybe you know, any of the, the small modular uh, devices that are used for hacking these days, right? Maybe it's a, a customized Raspberry Pi, or if you ever heard the, the pwn to own you know, plugs that we can stick in uh, to the network, right? Can it get an IP address automatically through something like DHCP, which you don't always see in control system environments, but it can exist. Uh, or what if, Maybe they don't get an IP address through DHCP, but they can sniff network traffic, understand the local IP address range, and give themselves an IP address and still have full network connectivity. The idea is I, as the attacker, I now have that foothold on the network and I can use it to attack the rest of the systems. So hopefully, you know, just in the first couple of minutes, right? You start to get an understanding of why we need to have this register or this asset inventory, right? This complete list of not only looking for the assets, right? The hardware, the pieces of hardware, but also the software, the firmware, the applications that are running on top of these assets. And then when we come back and we'll talk later on about vulnerability management, that's where we really start to see a vulnerability management in control system environments can't exist without the asset register, right? without the inventory, because that tells us, that gives us the vendors, 
right, that create the applications and the software, right? I want to know is, oh, is that a Windows operating system or Linux? Well, what version of Windows? What version of Linux? Just like, oh, what, what applications are installed on top of those systems, right? I want to know, well, you know, are those, maybe it's Microsoft SQL Server. Well, what version of Microsoft SQL Server that's running on that data historian? I want to know that so I can map it to any potential vulnerabilities. The same thing is, what if I have a, a PLC or an HMI? Who's the vendor of that asset? And do, does it have any known vulnerabilities that I can map to it? Right? We need to be able to understand. And so we can kind of map those together and bring those up. But true vulnerability management, especially in control system environments, cannot function effectively and it cannot succeed without an asset register. We have to have that inventory. And then real quickly, just to wrap up this first part, when we start talking about, so where do we store the asset register or, or inventory? I think most environments still today, even small environments, large environments and everything in between still use a lot of Excel. Uh, there are other options out there and you can build your own version if you want. You can go buy a, a solution. You know, we talk about commercial off the shelf solutions. Uh, so that's that's an option. Uh, there are cloud based options as well. Just remember when you start talking about putting information in a file or an application. When we start thinking about, in this case, what type of information we're storing, and I go back to thinking of it from a threat and vulnerability management perspective, right? It's essentially a map of all the systems we have in the environment. And we talked about, well, it's going to have the, the version of the, the hardware or software, the, the manufacturer, the, the software versions, which we can then map to vulnerability. So if an attacker could get access to this information, like what could they do? They would have an, essentially a map on how to attack the network and to understand what's there, right? In a very you know, unique ICS, you know, OT environment where these environments are very unique from site to site, unlike you know, IT environments, which are, are, are kind of the same as you go from office to office or company to company. Right. So we're handing essentially the attackers a, a blueprint right, of, of how to attack the environment and, and to do it very successfully. So we have to make sure that we protect the asset registers wherever we store them, whether it's an Excel or an application we buy or one we create or, or maybe one we place in the cloud. But we have to make sure that it stays secure. And we're going to come back and talk about that in the last section. Uh, when we talk about you know, in, the, in this little series on asset registers and inventories. But but for now, just remember, again, wherever we store it, the one thing that really, truly matters is that we make sure we keep it secured. So we're encrypting it, we're protecting it from unauthorized access and et cetera. We have to make sure it's only accessible by those people that are operating that facility. So thanks for jumping in for the first section, and then uh, we'll come back uh, and talk a little bit more about asset registers. We'll talk about securing them. We're going to talk about how to use them from a threat and vulnerability management perspective. And before we get to all those fun things, we'll actually talk about how to build an asset register, whether we talk about walking through a facility and building it physically, or maybe we're going to look at things like packet captures from a network perspective to, to find and identify hosts and, and potential different applications and operating systems we have in the environment and and a few other tactics and, and techniques we have up our sleeves. So, so we'll talk about those uh, all in the next section. So thanks again. Uh, I appreciate everybody for taking the time. If you have any questions, uh, comments, or concerns, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. And then uh, you can get me at uh, Mike at uh, utilsec.com uh, or you can get me on LinkedIn uh, at Mike Wilcom. I'll talk to everybody then. All right, thank you. Have a good one. Take care.